welcome to St. Anne's for this great celebration of Pentecost. When we remember when the Holy Spirit came upon the apostles in the upper room, the apostles who were Jesus's um, followers and closest friends. And so we're excited to gather in this way today. My name is Naomi Lehu, and I'm the coordinator of discipleship here. And we're just so glad that you're joining us, whether you're a part of our St. Anne family, whether you're a part of a different parish and joining us, or maybe you're not even Catholic. Whatever has brought you here today, we know that your time is precious and we are humbled that you're choosing to spend it here with us. We'd encourage you to comment um, in the comment box if you're watching on Facebook and tell us where it is that you're joining us from. Now, before we begin this Mass, I want to go through a few things, just some reminders about some things and some updates. Um, but I want to first direct you to our website, stannanneparish.org. Everything that I'm going to go over can be found there. And our website really is the best place to find all the information, um, all the current things that are happening here at St. Anne's. So first, something a little newer to our website is that we have a prayer page. Um, so a page just for some of the prayer opportunities here at St. Anne's, which is really exciting as we continue to grow as a community of prayer together. One of the newer things on there is a prayer wall. And so this is a place where you can go, you can post your prayers, your needs, um, your intentions, and then you can also go there and you can pray for the needs that have been posted. I know that I have just really been so moved seeing the prayers that people are posting um, and just, just feeling like, like the Lord can, can move in that through the time that I take just to, to pray for those needs that have been posted there. And um, we also have some ways to gather together with people to pray, to gather digitally through Zoom. There's two opportunities each week. On Monday, there's a rosary um, for those with cancer. And on Thursday, there's what's called the prayer hub, which is a chance to gather with other people to pray for the needs of our parish, our community, and of our world. Um, also on our prayer page, you'll find more information about our adoration times. Adoration, Eucharistic adoration, is where we have a chance to be face-to-face -face with Jesus, who we believe is present there in the Eucharist. Um, so it's so exciting that that's available to us now as part of phase two of the reopening, and you can find all the details about that um, on that prayer page. Um, I also want to point out to you, um, Alpha Online is beginning June 4th. Okay, this is the second course of our online Alpha that is starting. So it's beginning this Thursday. So maybe you're not sure what Alpha is. Alpha is just a great chance to explore some of life's biggest questions, to meet new people, um, just to connect with our community. So if you're new to us, Alpha is a really great place to start. Um, if you're kind of searching and questioning, you know, Alpha really is designed for you. Um, just really think it's just an extraordinary opportunity to be able to be a part of that. So Alpha Online beginning June 4th. Now, if you're a part of our parish, you have heard us talk about Alpha, right? You've heard this before. And I just want to say that there has never been a better chance to try this. If you're like me, your evenings are a little freer right now, and jumping online has very little risk to it. You can be in your PJs and you can check it out. So really would encourage you, um, if you've been hearing about it for a long time, I've just never tried it, to give it a chance and to really get on there and check it out. Also, if there's somebody that you've been wanting to invite, this online provides an extraordinary opportunity. The current Alpha Online online course. I have a sister-in-law in New York and an uncle in Kentucky who are all a part of our current online Alpha course. And I have been hoping for three years for a way for my sister-in-law to experience Alpha. And I would have never dreamed that it could have been a Saint Anne Alpha through the incredible gift of technology. So I really encourage you to consider checking out Alpha and inviting somebody else to do it with you. We always want to point you to our Sabbath guide. It's a great way to go deeper into the weekly readings and to learn more about the practice of the week. Um, and also there in the Sabbath guide is just great stuff if you're a parent with kids to kind of make everything more practical, help kids really get more out of it. So be sure to check out the Sabbath guide all um, Sabbath guide each week. Um, and then just on our website, there's a place for outreach, right? That we gather together a community like this to pray, that we're praying for each other, you know, and on the prayer wall. But we also want to be a community that is really caring caring for each other tangibly for the physical needs that people have. And we know that there are a lot of needs right now during this pandemic. So I'm so excited to be able to update everyone. You know, a few weeks ago, we started our Be the Church Outreach Fund. Um, and because of everybody's incredible generosity, you have already given $40,895, which is just extraordinary. Now with the donors who are generously agreeing to match dollar for dollar, that means our outreach fund is at $81,700 and $90 that will go directly to parishioners who are in need. It's just so beautiful. If you've been thinking about giving and haven't had a chance, just a reminder that any donations given by May 31st, right? So this weekend will be matched. So really encourage you to consider that if you can. 
Now, if you are a parishioner who is in financial need, please go to that outreach page also, okay? There's a place to follow the steps, to, to reach out. We want to be able to help you, okay? That's why the whole reason we're doing this, you know? You are not alone, so don't be afraid to reach out for help. So all that is on our website. On our website, you'll also find a way to sign up for our email newsletter, which is especially going to be important as we continue these stages of reopening. Um, and in regards to reopening, like we said last week, I'm incredibly excited to be able to have in-person daily mass. Now, the schedule for that kind of changes, so be sure to check that out on the website or through social media. And finally, at the end of our mass, I encourage you to stick around for a kind of meet and greet chat with Father Paul afterwards. So look forward to um, putting your questions in the comment box, and we'll give those to Father Paul and have a chance to speak with him tonight. So let's take a moment. Let's calm our hearts and begin to prepare ourselves to encounter the Lord in this extraordinary solemnity of Pentecost. Oh, Spirit, all-embracing and counselor all-wise, unbounded splendor, gracing our shoreless sea of skies, unfailing is your treasure, unfading your reward, surpassing worldly pleasures, the riches you afford, come stream of endless flowing and rescue us from death, come wind of springtime blowing and warm us by your breath. Oh, beauty ever blazing in flower field and face, you show yourself amazing in unexpected place. We see you and remember what once our dreams had been. You fan the glowing ember and kindle hope within. Come fire of glory, gracious, bless all who trust in you. Undying flame, tenacious, burn in your church anew. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Our Mass today is offered for Kathleen Ego. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you suffered on the cross, stretching out your arms in an everlasting sign of reconciliation. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you rose from the dead and ascended to the right hand of the Father, interceding on our behalf. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you send us the Holy Spirit, the spirit of healing and power. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God. Jesus. 
Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us, you take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer, you are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy, have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father, Amen, Amen. Let us pray. O God, who by the mystery of today's great feast sanctify your whole church and every people and nation, pour out, we pray, the gifts of the Holy Spirit across the face of the earth. And with the divine grace that was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, fill now once more the hearts of believers. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Reading from the Acts of Apostles. When the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together. And suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as of fire, which parted and came to rest on each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven staying in Jerusalem. At this sound they gathered in a large crowd, but they were confused because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were astounded, and in amazement they asked, Are not all these people who are speaking Galileans? Then how does each of us hear them in his native language? We are Parthians, Medes, Elamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the districts of Libya near Cyrene, as well as travelers from Rome, both Jews and converts of Judaism Cretans and Arabs, yet we hear them speaking in our own tongues of the mighty acts of God. The word of the Lord. Lord, send out your spirit face of the earth, Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth, Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth, Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh Lord, my 
my God, you are great indeed. How manifold are your works, O Lord. The earth is full of your creatures. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. If you take away their breath, O oh Lord, they die and return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, they live. You renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. And may the Lord be glad in His work. Pleasing to Him be my theme, for I rejoice in the Lord. Lord, send out your Spirit and renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your Spirit and renew the face of the earth. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different works, but the same God who produces all of them in everyone. To teach individual and manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. As a body is one, though it has many parts, all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body, where Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, and we were all given to drink of one spirit. The word of the Lord. I invite you to join singing Veni Sancti Spiritus as we sing the Pentecost sequence. I'll sing a verse, and you at home, you can sing uh, Veni Sancti Spiritus. Come, Holy Spirit. Veni Sancti Spiritus. Veni Sancti Spiritus. Veni Sancti Spiritus. Veni Sancti Spiritus Come Holy Spirit From heaven shine forth With your glorious light Veni Sancti Spiritus Come Father of the poor Come, generous spirit, come, light of our heart, veni sancti spiritus, veni sancti spiritus, veni sancti spiritus, of consolers, wise is best. And our soul's most welcome guest, sweet refresh. 
refreshment, sweet repose, vain is Sancti Spiritus. Light most blessed, shine your grace in our heart's most secret place. Fill your faithful through and through, vain is Sancti Spiritus. Cleanse our soiled hearts of sin. Every soul's refreshed within. Wounded lives to health restore. Vain is Sancti Spiritus. Vain is Sancti Spiritus. Vain is Sancti Spiritus. On the faithful who are true. And profess their faith in you. In your sevenfold gifts descend. Vain is Sancti Spiritus. In our labor, rest most sweet. Pleasant coolness in the heat. Consolation in our woes. Vain is Sancti Spiritus. Left without your presence here, life itself would disappear. Nothing thrives apart from you. Vain is Sancti Spiritus. Bend the stubborn heart and will Melt the frozen, warm the chill Guide the wayward home once more Vain is Sancti Spiritus Give us virtue's your reward Give us your salvation, Lord Give us joys that never end. Vain is Sancti Spiritus. 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 you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. 
On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. I have so longed for this Feast of Pentecost all throughout this whole season of Easter and even before since the beginning of this quarantine because I think that with this pandemic and with all of the fear and with us physically being locked up in our doors, there are so many parallels between us and the the disciples we hear about on our gospel when the risen Christ appeared to them for the first time that they were afraid and that they were locked in that upper room behind closed doors. And in this gospel, which takes place on Easter day, he breathes on them and says, receive the Holy Spirit. But then after 50 days, the 40 days of privileged appearances of our risen Lord to his apostles, and then after his ascension, after the nine days of dedicated prayer, he sends the gift of the Holy Spirit upon them again and this time in fullness, and you can see it in stages, they go from being afraid to growing in confidence to becoming completely set on fire to transform the entire world with this good news. I have so longed for this Feast of Pentecost because I think that our Lord wants to do that with us right now, today that he's been drawing us out of our fear. I know that many are still afraid, but there's many who are just becoming complacent and frustrated and impatient, not necessarily afraid, but just set into their ways in this new normal of quarantine. And I think that our Lord wants to light a fire in our hearts with this gift of his Holy Spirit on Pentecost today. There are so many beautiful titles that we hear about in that profound sequence that we sang, the Veni Sancte Spiritus, Come Holy Spirit. This beautiful medieval hymn from the ninth century, it gives the Holy Spirit all these different beautiful titles and calls him things like living font of water to refresh us and the fire of divine love but I don't want us, as beautiful as these titles can be, to end up thinking of the Holy Spirit as some complex of abstract attributes or an impersonal power that we call upon only in time of need because the Holy Spirit is a person, first and foremost, a divine person, the third person of the Holy Trinity, and is sent to us as the promise of the Father so that we might be in deep relationship with this person of the Holy Spirit and so come into fullness of life. This incredible gift is something that our Lord says is an even better way than if he had stayed with us here in this moment. An even better way than if he had not ascended bodily into heaven is this gift of the Holy Spirit, the greatest of all gifts. But it's like the Holy Spirit is the neglected member of the Holy Trinity. It's like a gift, this greatest of all gifts, that we leave unwrapped and never touch and forget about and it collects dust. We don't nurture this relationship with the Holy Spirit. And if we think about any other circumstance, 
any other worldly example, it would just be absurd. Take, for example, if I went camping, for whatever reason, if I went camping in the Everglades with all the snakes and stuff, and if I was lost in those swamps and didn't know what to do, and then Bear Grylls showed up, and I was like, hey man, what's going on? I'll see you later, I've got this. Why would, why would I not ask the one person who can actually help me in that situation to help? Of course I would. I'd be like, oh, praise the Lord, Bear Grylls is here, okay, random, but he's going to lead me out of the Everglades. Or take, for example, if I needed to lift for some reason 1,104.25 pounds, about a foot in the air, and that Icelandic dude walked by who just broke the deadlift world record. And I was like, nah, it's okay, I can do this. Of course I would ask him, he's the only one who can do that. Or maybe an example, because those are silly, closer to home. This is my first year in a parish. I've been in studies for a long time. And I'm very familiar with that, that dynamic in a classroom where you have a question, but you're afraid to ask. You know that the teacher can help you, that that's why he's there, but that you're afraid to ask. And maybe that's why I had to go to school for so long to learn that lesson, because finally I got over my timidity and was able to go up to the teachers after class and have a conversation with them. And I think it was a mixture of embarrassment about my own inadequacy, that I didn't know the answer, and then sort of a pride, thinking that I should. And I know that's not a perfect parallel with nurturing relationship with the Holy Spirit, but I think that there's something there that, that this is the paraclete, the one, our advocate, the one who was sent to defend and comfort and guide us, this greatest of all gifts, this divine person whom the Lord pours out into our hearts. And we shy away from relationship with him. We neglect to show this divine physician who has come to heal us and to set us free from the chains of sin, the wounds that our sins have brought upon us. We neglect to show him the chains, thinking, oh, I've got this, I can handle this. We need to invite the Holy Spirit into this deep relation because that is what he wants more than anything else. That's the point of this whole feast. The promise of the Father given to us. Something incredible. It's truly life-giving, the only actual life-giving person in our lives, apart from the rest of the Holy Trinity. We need to invite him in and to foster that relationship with him. We read in our first reading in Acts 2 about how the Holy Spirit came upon the apostles suddenly with the noise of a rushing wind and how he lighted upon them with the symbol of tongues of fire this Feast of Pentecost was taking place on the Old, Fe- Old Testament Feast of Pentecost, which commemorates the giving of the law on Mount Sinai when the Lord himself appears to Moses in fire and gives him the law. And in this New Testament Feast of Pentecost, the tongues of fire over the heads of the apostles symbolize the giving of the new law, the writing of this law on their hearts in fulfillment of the prophecy of Jeremiah. And this great miracle of them speaking in languages that everyone around can understand symbolizes that this gospel is meant for everyone to go out to all nations, to the ends of the earth, for you, for me, that the Holy Spirit wants to come into our hearts and transform us and light us on fire to bring that good news out, out of this quarantine out of our fear, out of whatever darkness binds us, that this most beautiful light shine in our heart to illuminate it and to set us free, 
to set us on fire. Our practice for this week, as always, you can find it in the Sabbath guide. It's on our website, stannparish.org. stannparish.org. If you click Sabbath guide, you'll find it. Our practice for this week is to give us an occasion throughout our prayers this week to invite the Holy Spirit into a deeper relationship with us, to open ourselves up to a deeper relationship with him. We list off several different titles of the Holy Spirit. We give some scripture verses that I think are appropriate for fostering that relationship. But like Jeremiah said in Jeremiah 29, there is a fire in my heart and it burns in my bones and I cannot contain it and I cannot wait for you to hear that message until tomorrow or the next day or whenever you open that Sabbath guide because I think that God wants to act in us right now in this moment. And so I invite you to pray with me. We're going to take a few moments in silence and in prayer. I invite you to repeat after me wherever you are, whatever your relationship with the Holy Spirit is. Asking the Holy Spirit to come and flood your life with his grace is not some kind of magic. It's not reciting a spell. And it's also not inviting, like, calling to a cat or something that's going to ignore you. <laughs> like, God wants to come and invade our life with his power. And so let's invite him in. Please close your eyes and pray with me. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Fill our hearts with the fire of your love. Cast out whatever darkness brings us fear. Release whatever chains bind us. Part for us a path to true freedom in relation with you. Come, Creator Spirit. Renew in our hearts your divine grace. Make of us a new creation in you. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Transformed by the Holy Spirit, we pray now for the needs of the church and of the world. For Pope Francis and all church leaders, may God help them bear fruit according to their own gifts given by the Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a spirit of wisdom for all government and business leaders, that they will develop practices for reopening society that both protect society and promote the well-being of everyone. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a spirit of justice in the world, that the needy, the exploited, the abused, and the victims of war may know freedom, relief from oppression, and their dignities as sons and daughters of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those ordained to the priesthood this weekend, including Father Ryan Heischetter, that they recognize in themselves and each person they serve, a child of the Father, called by the Son and empowered through the Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us, that we may use the spiritual gifts we have been given by the Holy Spirit for the benefit of all, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and all those who care for them. May God's grace bring them healing and strength, especially those whose names are on the prayer chain and also for Chaka Collins, an unborn child, Eva Chavez, Esperanza Chioc, Alfonso Chavez, Beth Blankenship, Bernice Chavez, and Brian Hicks. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful departed, especially for Felicia Redding, Angela Madalone, Jose Rodriguez, and Alfonso Chavez. May they rejoice forever in the presence of the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, hear the prayers we bring before you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we prepare for the offertory, I would just remind you that since we don't have a collection basket right now, um, that we do have the ability to give online. And so I'd invite you to give um, and to give with a spirit of faith and generosity and even a sacrificial spirit. If you go to stannparish.org slash give, you'll find a link there for a one-time gift or a recurring e-gift. It's nothing worth more that will ever come close. Nothing can compare our living hope. Your presence I've tasted and seen. Of the sweetest of loves Where my heart becomes free And my shame is undone In your presence, Lord Holy Spirit, you are welcome Comfort this place and fill the atmosphere Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for To be overcome by your presence, Lord Holy Spirit, you are welcome here Come 
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that as promised by your Son, the Holy Spirit may reveal to us more abundantly the hidden mystery of this sacrifice and graciously lead us into all truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, mighty and eternal God, for bringing your paschal mystery to completion. You bestowed the Holy Spirit today on those you made your adopted children by uniting them to your only begotten Son. This same Spirit, as the Church came to birth, opened to all peoples the knowledge of God, and brought together the many languages of the earth in profession of the one faith. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, Every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of and earth are full of your glory. Hold on now in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hold on now in the highest. Hold on now in the You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood 
the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many in the forg- for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Anne and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Edward, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of Christ's peace. Mercy on us. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. At this time, we invite you to join us in the prayer that is uh, on the screen and make an act of spiritual communion. One bread, one body, one Lord. One cup of blessing which we bless And we, though many Throughout the earth We are one body Gentile or Jew, servant or free, woman or man, no more. One bread, one body, one Lord. Let us pray. O God, who bestow heavenly gifts upon your church, safeguard, we pray, the grace you have given, that the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out upon her 
may retain all its force and that this spiritual food may gain her abundance of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Go out, go out to all the world. Tell the good news. Tell the good, good news. Go out, go out. To all the world, tell the good news, tell the good, good news. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, all your nations. Glorify Him, glorify Him, you people. Go out to all the world Tell the good news Tell the good, good news Go out, go out to all the world Tell the good news Tell the good, good news Steadfast, steadfast Is His kindness toward us and the faithfulness of the Lord endures. Go out and tell the news. Go out, go out to all the world. Tell the good news. Tell the good, good news. Go out, go out to all the world. Tell the good news. Oh, tell the good news. Tell the good, good news. All right. Amen. Beautiful. Praise the Lord. Thank you for sticking with us afterwards for a little chat with Father Paul. If you have Howdy. some questions for him, uh, if you're watching on Facebook, just get him there in the comment box, and we'll try to um, get Father Paul's answers there. But I wanted to start with, I really, really loved your homily. I loved the passion that you had in speaking about the Holy Spirit, but I was a little disappointed because there were no, like, other languages, like, mm. throw, thrown in there. So, Father, I, I was thinking there's something with paraclete, right? Isn't that like a Greek? Greek? It is Greek. Greek. Ah, awesome. Can you <laughs> Great tell job, us a little bit about that? <laughs> yeah, so happy to talk about Greek words right now. Okay. Paraclete, parakletos. It comes from parakaleo. It's a Greek verb, which means literally to call beside. Kaleo means call, para means beside. And so when we see it translated in the Bible, they do it contextually. They'll do it as counselor or comforter or sometimes advocate. That's how it was translated in Latin to advocatus. It's the same thing. It means called beside, like vocatus, vacation, vocation. Um, but it was a term that was used in antiquity for a defense attorney, someone who's called to your side to represent you, defend you, give you counsel, comfort, comfort, yeah. I guess. That's so but, awesome. I just yeah. love that imagery, right? The Holy Spirit is the one who is, who is called alongside us to be with us. It's just, it's just so beautiful. And I love when you bring in um, kind of the, the Greek and the different words there. So thank you for that, Father Paul. So we'll thank see you. again. If you have any questions that you have for him, just stick in the comment box. Um, but if you didn't know, um, if you're watching on Saturday, um, Saturday, May 30th is a big day in the life of our diocese as there were some ordinations today um, mm. to the priesthood. So Father Paul, you were there? Yeah, I was. I was there this morning. It was at St. Francis in Frisco. And um, how many? How many? There were new six priests? newly ordained priests this morning. Praise God! It amazing. was awesome. And Father Ryan Highshutter, right? From Father Saint Ryan Highshutter from Father, our parish. Was there another? Or? 
okay. not from okay. our parish, but Father Garrett Bachman. I'm going to fail if I try and yeah, list yeah. them no, all. Yeah, no, no, that's okay. That's Don't okay. put so me on the spot like that. An exciting day, exciting day I for know the diocese. All. So, yeah, and yeah. I'm sure it was a very beautiful. Yeah, no, it was, it was awesome. Um, and I was thinking, like, what a great day for ordinations because, like, the the hymn, not, not exactly the hymn that we sang, we sang the Veni Sancte Spiritus, but there's another hymn that's always sung uh, for evening prayer on Pentecost, which is the Veni Creator Spiritus, and you also sing that on ordination. So I've gotten to hear it twice today. It's <laughs> so awesome. you're just loving it, like it's so amazing, huh? So, yeah, now so I know happy. a part of a priestly ordination, right, is a moment where the, the man who's about to be ordained, right, lays, lays prostrate, right, lays yes. face down, Mm -hmm. on the floor, if you've never seen it, it's very extraordinary. Do, do you happen to remember four years ago, like what, what was going through your head as you were about to be ordained a priest and you're like, I mean really like laying face down on the floor, what, what were you thinking then? Yeah, I was thinking don't fall asleep <laughs> because I, no seriously, because I'd flown back two days or uh, yeah, something moving, more Father, profound. I'm just saying. <laughs> No, because I was so tired. I was jet lagged. I flew back like the day or two before, two days before that from Rome for our ordinations here. And so I was on like seven hours ahead. I was thinking, don't fall asleep. It should be more profound than this. But at least other people are praying, even if I'm just trying to stay awake. There you go. The um, beauty of the church, right? That people were praying. So Yeah. yeah it was good. a tremendous moment. It was tremendous to see those six guys lay down prostrate and to pray the litany of the saints and invoke like all possible graces and prayers wow, over them wow. today. It's just, it just beautiful yeah. symbolism of really laying down their life, right? In, yeah. in service of the church. So such an exciting day. Um, we have a few questions. Um, Colette, she says, my daughter wants to know how you change the light bulbs in the dome. I have I no idea. No, right? I think there's a huge <laughs> lift that they have to get in here to do that. It can't it's be a ladder. No, <laughs> no, no it's definitely, we got to get that like on video. That would be a really awesome thing to like broadcast someday. People want to know about the lift. So great question. I want to know too. That's a good question, Colette, <laughs> or Colette's daughter. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, also, uh, Emma, here she's got insider scoop here about a podcast plan, right? So if you um, have been following the um, social media stuff live, the live schedule is ending now with the end of the Easter season, mm -hmm. right? But a new podcast in the works, which is super exciting. So do you want to tell us about that? Yeah, I do. So I've been doing these, these live stream things. I think many of you all watch those um, all throughout Easter season, um, but we're moving to a podcast and I'm being joined by our director of youth ministry and AV technician extraordinaire, Joey Scansella. Man of many gifts, Mr. Yeah, Joey Never Scansella. been called that, but yes. no, he's, he's awesome. Um, so we're starting a podcast, and we're starting it real soon. So stay tuned to, do you say that for social media, stay tuned? I, I don't mean, know. Sure, I say works. it for everything. Does that mean you don't actually know? I mean, is that what you're trying to say? I stay tuned. Don't, know, this week? But this week, probably? I think it's going to be okay. this week. We're hoping for this week. So there you go. Great reason to continue to follow us on social media and subscribe for the email newsletter so that you can be all in the know about when the podcast starts. So also lots of posts as a shout out of happy birthday to Curtis which is what? June 1st, right? Is your birthday June 1st? So here we go. These guys are amazing birthday, parish Curtis. here to remember and to shout out to Curtis who has been um, here so faithfully through so much of this and all of the liturgies here that we've had at St. Anne. So happy birthday, man. So, well, we have a big evening after this. We do. Do you want to mention that, Father? Yes. So after this, because with the pandemic and everything, like everything shut down and those who were preparing to enter the church um, have just been waiting. <laughs> They're in a holding pattern. And tonight, we're going to bring in the new catechumens into the church. We're going to baptize and confirm them. It's so awesome. And again, such an appropriate day. Again, during confirmations, you sing the Veni Creator Spiritus, so that would be a trifecta of Veni Creator <laughs> Spiritus today. But we're going to do that right after this Mass. Um, That's amazing. So, so exciting. So we've been preparing to come into the church and have never been baptized, these adults. They're supposed to be baptized and brought into the church yeah. at the Easter, Easter vigil. vigil. And so, boy, talk about waiting this entire time. So such an exciting, exciting day for um, our parish and our diocese. So we will um, probably wrap up here then because you guys got to make a quick so. change to, uh, to get ready for that. But we're so grateful for you joining us um, and just happy Pentecost. Take care. God bless.